This week, I was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Now, normally the prognosis for this is not very encouraging, but I'm gonna fight this and I'm gonna keep working and with the love and support of my family and friends and with the help of your prayers also, I plan to beat the low survival rate statistics for this disease. Alex Trebek, just put it very nicely there. I'm gonna to try to be a, a bit more real. Pancreatic cancer is a known killer to most of us. Kill my mom, who was 78 years old. He killed Chris Houston, one of my really good friends and assignment manager right here in the newsroom. He was in his early 40s. There are survivors though, like Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but it's a really short list of survivors. Joining me to bring a little context to this conversation is Dr. Ben Weinberg. He's originally from Bethesda. He's a medical oncologist with MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. Doc, th thanks for joining us. Why is pancreatic cancer after all this time, all these years, I mean, still so deadly? So one of the reasons is we don't have a good screening test for pancreatic cancer like we do with colonoscopies for colon cancer, for example. It's often found too late beyond the stage where it can be cured. In 2019, the only way we know to cure a pancreatic cancer is to surgically remove the cancer all at one piece and not leave any trace behind. And unfortunately, very few patients even have the opportunity to undergo such a surgery because the cancer's already spread by the time they're diagnosed. Are there any likely candidates, I, I mean, uh, people or a group of people or a sex, you know, whatever that we can point to so that perhaps we, we can start some early screening? Mm -hmm. So there definitely are groups we think that are, that are at high risk for developing pancreatic cancer. One of the risks is people who have chronic pancreatitis, so inflammation in the pancreas that occurs over many, many years. The biggest risk, though, is in patients who have a family history of pancreatic cancer or similar cancers such as breast and ovarian cancer. There are certain cancer syndromes that we know actually increase the risk of pancreas cancer many, many fold. And those patients actually have specific screening recommendations where they should undergo fairly invasive screening relatively early on in life. Okay, why is it that most of the cases we hear about, it's already advanced, stage four? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, there are not many symptoms before the cancer spreads outside the pancreas. Uh, there are a few patients who present with painless jaundice, where uh, cancer in the head of the pancreas can cause that symptom before it spreads elsewhere. But many patients present with sort of vague, nonspecific symptoms, abdominal pain, what we call early satiety, feeling full after a meal short, more quickly than you otherwise normally would and sort of vague sort of heartburn type symptoms. All those symptoms are often not pancreas cancer, they're something completely else. So for those reasons, oftentimes people present later and the, by that point the cancer's already spread outside the pancreas. Yeah, uh, why is it, those that do survive, mm -hmm. just lucky or? So there's I think a couple groups. So, so what's the percentage there? So taking all comers with pancreatic cancer, the five year survival rate remains a dismal 9%, meaning that out of 100 people, 91 are dead within five years from this disease. Now, as dismal as that sound, it used to be you know, two, 3% not that long ago. So we are making some small improvements, but clearly there's a long way to go. For uh, Alex Trebek, someone who's diagnosed with metastatic stage four pancreatic cancer, that number drops to about 2.7%, meaning that almost all patients are d dead within five years. Now, the people who are found very early, often incidentally, probably like Ruth Bader Ginsburg was because she was being screened for other cancer she had, if you can find it very early before even symptoms develop, those patients are often the ones that are in that 9% who can get the surgery and now what we recommend is fairly intensive chemotherapy either before or after the surgery to kill what we think are microscopic metastatic cells that are probably already there by the time we can actually see something big enough to light up on a CT scan. Uh, as a survivor of cancer, okay, not Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, why don't we just screen everybody then? Mm -hmm. So that's a very good question. So even if we can see a pancreatic mass on a scan, it can still be hard to get the diagnosis because the main way to do it is an endoscopic ultrasound, sort of like a colonoscopy, but they go through the mouth into the stomach with a camera with, and then an ultrasound probe on the end and they look around through the stomach wall and actually try to find the mass in the pancreas and stick a small needle into it. Even if you can see it on a scan, it's sometimes I have patients who've had many of these procedures and still can't get a tissue diagnosis. We can't get cells under a microscope to show there's a cancer there. So you imagine if you start screening large swaths of the population, that's a very invasive test and that's the best test we have. What I think is imperative is to develop better screening tests. So 
those high-risk populations, those populations with a strong family history, those populations with new onset diabetes after age 50, we think there's a good sub subset of that population that could actually end up developing pancreatic cancer. And then we need better screening tests. So there's a lot of blood-based tests that are in development that can then narrow that down to a group that really should undergo that fairly invasive here, screening here's test. My, here's my exit question. Uh, the cost, mm -hmm. is, that a, is that a problem here? Is that why we're not doing more screening? Because the cost, who's going to pay? Right, cost of screening is always an issue regardless of the screening test. And for a screening test to be effective, it really has to find early stage disease that um, could be surgically cured right. and lead to long-term survival. And pancreas cancer, that's a tough hill to climb. Right. Doctor, thank you very much. Ben Weinberg with uh, MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. Thank you.